In the last couple of videos, we've explored if they give us a function, how do we in fact find the inverse of that function? And we worked through a couple of examples of that. And then we double checked our answers by graphing them and looking to see if they matched over the line y equals x. But we saw in some of our examples on their graph, like this here, that the graph became very complicated, especially if your graphing calculator doesn't graph in colors, and it became very difficult to see whether they matched or not. A different way to prove whether a function in its inverse are the correct inverses of each other or not. And so that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So the way that we do that to prove that they are an inverse function of each other is, of course, if our function is one-to-one, -one, then we take the composition of each other. So if f of f inverse comes out to be x and f inverse of f comes out to be x, then they are inverses of each other. So we actually have to prove it both directions. So we have to prove f inverse of f, and we have to prove f of f inverse. If both of these come out to be x, then they are, in fact, inverses of each other. Okay, so let's do this in an example. So they give us f of x, and they give us f inverse of x, and we want to prove that they are, in fact, inverses. So what we need to do is we need to take f of f inverse of x, show that that is equivalent to x, and f inverse of f of x, and show that that is equivalent to x. Okay, so the first one, I take my inverse function, and I substitute it into x for all of the x's. So this gives me 5 times, instead of x, I type in my inverse function, x minus 8 over 5, add 8, and hopefully this works out to be x. So I just simplify it. 5 divided by 5 cancels out, leaving me with x minus 8 plus 8. The 8's cancel out, and of course this works out to be x. So half of my property holds true. Now I've got to do the other way. So now I've got to take my f of x, and I've got to plug it in for all of the x's and my f inverse of x. So this gives me, instead of x, I substitute in 5x plus 8. My original function has minus 8 over 5. If I simplify this, the 8's cancel out, and then my 5's cancel out, and of course this is also x. So I have f of f inverse is equivalent to x, and I have f inverse of f of x is equivalent to x. So since both of these hold true, that means that this is, in fact, that these are, in fact, inverses of each other. Okay, so now that we see what we're doing, let's go ahead and do this on a second example. But we see that this example is actually a word application, but it's going to work out the exact same way. The cost for a speeding ticket is $100 plus $12 for each mile per hour over the speed limit. The cost of the ticket f of x in dollars is given by this function. We know it's a flat rate of $100 plus 12 times the number of miles per hour over the speed limit it is. And that's what it says here. X is the number of miles an hour over the posted speed limit. Okay. So it says determine if the function given by g of x is, in fact, the inverse of f. So the way that we have to do this is we take f of g of x, show that that is equivalent to x, and vice versa, g of f of x. We need to show that that is also equivalent to x. So first, f of g. That means we take my g function and we plug it into all of the x's in my f function. So that is 100 plus 12 times my g function, x minus 100 over 12. Well, we see that the 12's are going to cancel out, the 100's are going to cancel out, and of course that simplifies to be x. Now the opposite way, we need to take our f function and plug it in for all of the x's in my g function. So that means instead of x, I have 100 plus 12x minus 100 over 12. 
Well, the hundreds cancel out, the twelves cancel out, and we're left with x. So in part a, to determine if the function is in fact inverse of it, it is, because we proved that the composition in both directions works out to be x. Okay, now the actual question here. Interpret the meaning of g of x in the context of this problem. So we know what f is. f is the cost of the speeding ticket, $100 plus $12 times the number of miles hour over. What does g actually mean in this problem? Well, we have to think about this, the inverse of each other. Let's think about what two things are being described in this process. The first thing that's being described is the cost of the speeding ticket. So that's what f of x is. f of x is how much it's going to cost this person that's speeding. The other thing that's talked about here is the x value. Well, the x value is determined as the number of miles per hour over the speed limit that's posted. Well, if the inverse function flip-flops these, then that's exactly what it is. So g is now the number of miles of hour over the speed limit dependent upon what our f of x was, or our cost. So it interchanges the x and y. It interchanges the two things that we are comparing in this equation. So the answer to part b is the number of miles per hour over the speed limit dependent upon cost of the ticket. So let me kind of describe this one more time. So first we have our f of x function. So first our f of x function tells us the cost of the speeding ticket dependent upon the number of miles an hour over. So a police officer could say, you are going 10 miles an hour over the speed limit, so dependent upon that, here is the cost of your speeding ticket. Now if we do the inverse, it flip-flops it. It says, if the cost of your speeding ticket is this much, then this is how many miles of hour over the speed limit that you are traveling. So if a friend comes up to you and says, I have a ticket that cost me $160, then you could figure out how fast they were in fact going over the speed limit. So it's comparing the exact same things, it's just talking about it in inverse context. And so here finishes up this video of proving things that are inverses of each other by using composition and actually interpreting how that can be useful in real life.